One of my favourite film emulators for digital photography is DxO Film Pack 6. In this video, I'll be sharing the reasons why I like it so much and I'll be demonstrating a few of its features. First off, I love that you can use Film Pack 6 as either a standalone editor or as a plugin for the likes of Photoshop. Both versions of the software look and feel the same, sharing a new modern interface. When installing Film Pack, you add both the standalone software and the plugin. The installation process finds compatible host programs on your computer to install the plugin to. DxO lists these as Lightroom and Photoshop on its website, but there are others. At the bottom of the installation dialog, you'll find the option to add a Photoshop plugin folder if it's not detected. This means that if you don't have either Lightroom or Photoshop installed, you can still install the plugins, which of course is great for Affinity Photo users. Yes, the Film Pack 6 software will work as a plugin with Affinity Photo. The only problem I've found when using it with Affinity Photo though is that it doesn't like some of the colour spaces. Colour spaces like Profoto RGB may cause a colour shift which may not always be obvious at first depending on the film simulation you're using. You can easily prevent this though by converting the image to a different colour space that you know works using the option in the Affinity document menu. Although the plugin and standalone versions are similar, with the standalone Elite version, you also have support for RAW files. Then, when you process a RAW file in Film Pack, it also applies the DxO lens corrections automatically, although you can disable this. Best of all, for us Fuji users, Film Pack 6 supports Fuji Xtrans RAW files now, which is inherited from DxO Photolab 5 Elite. And whilst mentioning Photolab, I should say that the Film Pack software integrates tightly into Photolab. After activation, you'll find various panels and features from Film Pack become visible in Photolab. The DxO team prides itself on the image quality of its software, and it's no different with Film Pack. When you browse the DxO website, you'll see plenty of mentions of faithful film renderings and authentic film grain. I would love to be able to compare the accuracy of the film simulations and the grain to the original films, but I can't do that. I'll have to trust that DxO knows what it's doing here, and instead I'll be considering how they make my image appear and if I can control the look. I'm using the Elite version of the Film Pack software, which has 38 black and white simulations, 29 colour positive or slide film emulations, and the 17 colour negative films. But the software also comes with other categories of simulation to choose from, such as 39 designer presets, which include special effects. These are displayed in a thumbnail grid. You can browse, each thumbnail showing the effect of the preset. Personally, I find it a struggle to browse through so many thumbnails, but there are a few tools to help. Often you'll find yourself using only a few films or presets that you like, so you can mark those as favourites by clicking the star icon. Then you can turn on the favourites filter, so you only show those. Another useful option is the filter list. Here I can choose between colour or black and white film renderings. But I can also apply additional filters like negative films to further refine the list. One other feature that you might like to try when choosing a film is the time machine. This arranges the film simulations by the decade they represent. Just select a decade and then scroll through the films in that decade. Over on the left, we have a short extract about historical images captured using these films. If I click the thumbnail, it opens a larger image preview, which I can also choose to apply to my images. Let's look at the Arcadia preset from my favourites, because there's something I want to show you. Notice this film edge around the image. You see effects like this because Arcadia is a designer preset and not a pure film simulation. I'll show you some of these special effects later in the video, but first, let's look at adjusting the image. The additional adjustments you can make to any preset is one of my favourite things about DxL Film Pack. When I click the Modify option in the toolbar, Film Pack switches between the preset thumbnail and the adjustment controls. Now we can see the Arcadia preset is using the Kodak Portra film simulation, but we can also see other adjustments it's making to the image. These are a great source of ideas for creating your own looks, which you can then save as presets. 
Notice we have an intensity slider where we can control how strong the effect of the film rendering is on the image. This ranges from 0% which removes the effect up to 200% which doubles its intensity. With this image I prefer the film rendering strength to be around 100%. Below the film simulation, we can choose the type of film grain we want to apply. Notice the presets using Ilford Delta grain rather than the Kodak Portra. The film grains used don't need to match the film, so you're free to mix and match. When we select a film grain, there's then a control to adjust the intensity or strength of the grain. But we can also affect its size by choosing the film format. Here we can switch between 35mm, medium format or large format film, but there's also a custom option where you have complete control over the grain size. Then if we look down the development section you can see other adjustments you might want to apply. For example we can remove the fine and micro contrast to give the image a softer feel. Now let's look at the graphical effects we can add to this image which is another big plus point for me in the film pack software. Earlier I mentioned the preset we're using added a frame around the image, but you can easily change this in the effects section. Using the frame dropdown I can remove the film edge from around the frame, or I can choose a different film edge like instant. When you add a frame to an image you'll see a size slider. You can use this to control the size of the frame edge in relation to the image. There's also a rotate button that moves the frame 90 degrees with each click. If you're a fan of textures like scratches and paper surfaces, you can also add those to your image. There's also a great collection of light leak effects that you can use. I'll apply the Color Leak 2 option to this image. Then I can pick the edge that I want to align the light leak to by clicking these icons. Finally, there's a section for the lens effects where I'm going to add a cool tone to the image. And I'll also add a vignette effect to darken the edges. After creating the look that I want for this image, I'll save the settings as a new preset. Now I can see the new preset is available in the thumbnail grid to use with other images. To apply the changes that I've made to this image, I can click the save option to the top left of the toolbar. If this was a standalone version, this icon would export the image rather than returning me to Photoshop. I think the DXL Film Pack is one of the best film simulation packages available for photography, but even then there are times when I want even more special effects. That's when I like to process my Film Pack images in Analog Effects Pro from the Nick collection. In this video I demonstrate one filter that makes producing double exposure images easy. It's a great one to watch next if you aren't familiar with analog effects. I hope you found this video interesting, thanks for watching and if you haven't already don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you soon for another video.